If I were to ask you now for your prediction going into 2024 of not what you want to see happen, but what you think will happen, not just in terms of the result, but what things do you expect to see along the way? Yeah, um, I will say I am ever more skeptical of my ability or anyone else's ability to predict Mm. based on the intrusion of AI into essential functions. And we can come back to that in a second, but I, um, I have generated two rules for how to approach the AI era. And I should just be clear. I do not know if we currently live in the AGI era or if we are soon to enter the AGI era, but I think it's one of those two. Right. It may be that we're not there yet, but it's coming. Um, but anyway, the powers that have come out of uh, the LLM revolution are such that it makes, I believe we have crossed over the mother of all event horizons. And the definition of an event horizon is that you can't predict what's on the other side of it. Um, you know, at a physical level, that's true for something like a black hole. There's a point at which... Um, because of its capacity to draw things in, there's no ability to detect and therefore predict what's going on inside. Um, So I'm hesitant about my own predictions. My first rule is you should become agnostic about anything you thought you knew about any domain that AI plausibly affects Um, until you formally go through the process of convincing yourself that it remains true. In other words, there were lots of things that were true um, that may or may not be true now. And the only thing that will convince me of these, I don't, I just, I've taken them all off of autopilot. I've now gone back into a formal process where I have to check everything. That's rule one. Rule two is deal with artificial intelligence like, uh a another species about which you know nothing do not assume that just because it speaks english and says things that sound familiar to you that you know why it would say that you don't um but anyway in terms of predictions in this very unpredictable era i think certain processes that we have already seen unfolding are going to continue and that you know, two of them are on a collision course. I, as for what happens when they collide, I can say, I believe that uh, 2024 is going to be in some ways like nothing we've ever seen, right? The amount that is at stake is so great. And the degree to which the rent-seeking elites or whatever it is that is capturing our system and running it uh, are burning properties that were important to them. That implies that they are playing endgame dynamics rather than continuing to play the same game or believing that they will be continuing to play the same game. That worries me. Are they going for broke and trying to institute things and becoming more visible because they uh uh, because they understand that being revealed is not the worst thing at this moment the real question is are they able to make the structural changes that they that they desire um so let's say i i am very concerned that the Democratic Party can not afford to lose this election and it doesn't have a viable candidate, okay? That's a frightening combination of facts. It can't afford to lose because it can't afford to face the hearings that would happen if the Republicans were in charge of both houses of Congress, um, especially under a Republican president, right? The hearings that would happen over COVID would be devastating to the Democrats. Um, 
So what will they do in order not to lose? That's the question. And my feeling is just about anything. Hmm. Um, the, the important the important thing that I can't predict the outcome of that is definitely coming is a head-on collision between the dissident movement, which is growing, which is um, coalescing around a number of issues. You know, there was a COVID dissident movement, but the COVID dissident movement and the dissident movement that uh, is alarmed by things like um, the central bank digital currencies, right? The anti-authoritarian dissident movement. Those things are joining forces because they're realizing they are up against the same antagonist. That antagonist, which I call Goliath. Goliath is the force that that prevents meaningful change. Um, and the question is, first of all, the the COVID pandemic woke a huge number of people up, right? People went along with stuff and then they ended up feeling frightened and foolish for having done so. And that has them in a new state where they are ready to contemplate things they wouldn't have been ready to contemplate five years ago. In that context, with lots of people, I don't think any of us are fully awake, but with lots of people much more awake than they have been in living memory, having transparent manipulation of history, of information, uh, of human health, having these things happen in the open means that I believe people are going to continue to wake in greater numbers and that that means that they are a potentially tremendously powerful political force to the extent that elections still carry the power to shift who governs and in what direction. And that that's really, that's what's going to dominate 2024 is a battle to keep the corrupt structure coming along and then there are many of us who understand that at the very least we are united in uh, being angry at having our rights to self-governance breached, All right? So that collision between those two forces is going to dominate uh, the upcoming year. How it plays out, I don't think anybody can say. Um but I would expect I would expect pandemonium at some level. But again, this is now going to take place in an era in which whether we have AGI or not, we do have very powerful artificially intelligent tools that are going to be tremendously useful in misleading people. Right? They may be useful in untangling uh propaganda. In fact, they are useful for detecting and untangling propaganda. But the real question is, are they more powerful in the hands of the propagandists or in the hands of those who wish to see through what they're doing? And I, I'm concerned that they are more powerful in the hands of the propagandists than they are in the hands of those who would unspin the propaganda.